by the time I turned 17, I like had no, like I looked around and like there was, I felt like there was absolutely nothing in this world, the society for me. I found no meaning in it. Everything was just, I, I fit in nowhere. I, yeah, and then I took acid for the first time. It just, it just came to me, kind of. I was seeking it out, I suppose. I just heard this random kid say acid while I was working at a grocery store getting cards. I turned around and I said, you have, did you say acid? I said, did you say acid? And he was like, yeah. I was like, do you have some? He's like, maybe. And I got it, and I took it, and it was, there's like a very, very clear line in my life, like, the, by far, like, the clearest division you can make in my life, as clear as fucking day, is like, before I took acid, and then after I had taken acid, it was so fucking beautiful, and it was amazing, and I was with the greatest fucking person I could have ever been with, the greatest trip sitter, the best friend since, like, we are childhood friends. It was fucking amazing, beautiful. I, like, felt so embarrassed, like, so much of, like, especially, like, the first dozen or two dozen trips, like, my ego and all the shit I had to, like, just destroy over and over and over again, because he was, he was just in the moment, he was 100% himself, like, more so than, like, anybody I've met since, that was because he went through some really fucked up childhood traumas. His dad's fucking piece of shit asshole. And his mom was like, most beautiful, fucking loving, like very, very religious, like spiritual, you know, like. And she died of cancer, like brain cancer that was extremely rare exceedingly rare and he had like five sisters and one brother and everything played out in like the worst possible way it ever could have and yeah he was able to like not stay on top of it but he was so fucking beautiful I fucking miss that kid. I miss him more and more. Something goes on. I understand different aspects of the childhood more and more. He committed suicide. He was 20. And I was 20. That's another story for another time, though. God, those acid trips. Just the most life affirming. Just beautiful. We never took a any of it for granted for a second. We, I sure as fuck knew. Like he knew too. We're on a gold mine. We're getting some of the best fucking acid that some white upper middle class suburban boys like us, Chicago suburbs, could ever hope for. Uh, that kind of acid should not have been around there. We couldn't get alcohol. Like, alcohol was exceedingly difficult for us to, like, get. Like, could find somebody who could buy it for us. But we could get acid. Anytime. Our dealer. God bless his heart. He was not smart about all of it. <laughs> Just having people in and out. And he was, like, living in the basement of his parents' house. And I think one of the one of them had some kind of connection to law enforcement. It was just absurd. Uh, the entire thing was absurd, but God, I love that kid so much. He was such a goofy motherfucker. He's just full of love and he's just so trippy. He goes over to all the 
all the concert or the festivals. Like he just save up all the drug money to go to all the festivals. And he's a fucking riot, man. And the suburbs too. It's like a regular suburban neighborhood. <laughs> the worst place he could have been doing it. The last time I saw him, he was watching the DEA show. <laughs> It's on Spike TV or something. It's like, man, it's like watching the, the enemy, like, doing their thing and, like, all of that. And I'm just thinking, like, yeah, man, I hope we're taking notes or something. Like, maybe figure out what, like, how they're getting busted so you don't get busted. But he didn't do any of that. And he got busted. All I heard was somebody, like, ended up with... Waking up and the D had a shotgun in their face and they ratted um, all sorts of people but him and they came in and they found a lot of different drugs on him. A lot of different drugs. He's always selling ecstasy and uh, I think he had DMT, he had mushrooms, he had the LSD. Uh, I never, wherever you are man, if you ever see this. Fucking sorry that happened to you, man. I hope you did not spend much time in prison. I sure as fuck hope you're out of prison now. You haven't been in prison for like over a decade. I, I'd be surprised. I'd be really surprised. I mean, if you were black, yeah, probably. <laughs> you're white suburban, you know, like I'm sure you found something. God, I'm fucking so thankful for that guy. So thankful for you. If you're watching. That shit just changed my life for the better, like in a thousand times for the better. That first trip, I was just like, LSD, 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 LSD. I'm never gonna be able to focus in school. I'll be like, blah, 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 blah. LSD, teacher, you know why it exists. Oh, man. 